The Nuba people of central Sudan are proud of their African culture, a non-Islamic culture that is criticized and condemned by the fundamentalist generals who now rule Sudan. The Nuba delight in their music, their body painting, and their body decoration. But above all, in their wrestling. A sport that is unfailingly good-humoured. The Nuba are one of the most tolerant and one of the oldest peoples in Africa. Some 50 Nuba tribes, Muslim, Christian and traditional believers, live in harmony just inside the Arab north of Sudan. For centuries they have been treated as third-class citizens by Sudan's Arab rulers, told that their African culture is inferior. In 1987, Many Nuba took up arms alongside their fellow Africans in the Sudan People's Liberation Army of Southern Sudan to fight for a democratic, secular state and the right to be Nuba. But they are few in number and weak in firepower compared to the government forces and are fighting an uphill battle against Islamic troops and militias that denounce them as infidels and have declared a holy war against them. Driven high into these mountains and living now on rock, the Nuba have been forced to adapt to life under arms. But life in the mountains is hard. Women often walk for hours to find water, and SPLA soldiers do not always manage to protect them against ambushes by government soldiers. It's difficult to cultivate on the thin and rocky mountain soil and Nuba children are chronically malnourished. Very few outsiders are able to see the truth of life in rebel-controlled areas. The government of Sudan has blockaded the Nuba mountains since 1989 and flying in secretly is hazardous. Many Nuba have stayed on in the mountains despite the difficulties and dangers of life here because of their love for the man who led them into rebellion, Yusuf Kua. But Kua died in March after leading the Nuba struggle for survival for 16 years. He was the only leader these people have known, and they were devastated by his death. <laughs> Men and women still come every day to tend his grave. He gave the ordinary people a new belief in themselves and their African identity. And he impressed on his soldiers the importance of respecting civilians. He combined armed struggle with concern for human rights and was the first SPLA commander to allow human rights monitoring in areas under his control. Johannes Ajawin of the London-based organization Justice Africa is the man in charge of the monitoring program. Yusuf to many the Nuba, and for that matter, to many who knew him. He was a teacher, a leader, respected and not feared at all. And this to me is the biggest legacy of Yusuf. A person in his position would have been feared but not respected. He was respected and not feared. Kua's legacy presents a huge challenge to the man who has succeeded him, Ablaziz Adam al Hello, one of the SPLA's most successful military commanders. Commander al Hello is not a Nuba. He's from Davfur in western Sudan. But he was born, raised, and educated in the Nuba Mountains. As well as being a close personal friend of Kua, he was Kua's deputy in the mountains for many years the man Kua wanted to succeed him. Soon after his arrival in the mountains, Commander El Helo showed his commitment to the Nuba by bringing his family into this war zone from the safety of their home in Uganda. Three children, including a five-month-old baby and his wife, Fatma. 
Life in the blockaded mountains without cars, shops or electricity is a very different life to the life they've been used to. The children took to it like ducks to water. Unlike Nuba children, they had never before ridden on a donkey. And for a while at least, they were blissfully unaware of their parents' concerns. I decided to bring my family to the Nuba Mountains uh, because I want, them, I want them to be near uh, to me. Also, we want to share the experience with the rest of the, of the people in the Nuba Mountains. And uh, uh, if uh, there is happiness, we share it. If there is suffering, we share it together with the people. This is why I brought them. A delegation from the American charity Samaritan's Purse flew into the mountains 24 hours after Commander El Hilo's family. Their arrival coincided with the start of a government offensive in which many villages were burned, food stores destroyed, and all airstrips were closed by shelling. When we landed the airplane, we unloaded the five tons of food that we brought. The plane took off. 20 minutes after that, uh, the airport was shelled. And uh, we started walking away from the shelling. There were six or seven rounds that came in. The humanitarian situation right now, particularly in regards to food, is drastic. If access is denied, there'll be a famine here. Uh, we're going to see people dying, starving to death. And even if uh, there is some points of access, if one or two airstrips, for example, are open, you're still going to see a lot of suffering. There's no way that we'll be able to bring in uh, the food that these people need and have asked for. Uh, Hunger is not the only problem facing the people of the Nuba Mountains this year. In recent months, the government of Sudan has launched an unprecedented campaign of aerial bombardment. These holes were prepared and intended for the protection of my family from uh, antinope bombardment. Because usually the government of Sudan sent Antonov uh, high altitude bombers to bombard the area uh, without differentiating between the military camp and the civil uh, population residents. This is why we prepared them for the members of my family to protect themselves in case of any aerial bombardment. Most of the victims of government attacks are civilians. Some are adults, like this porter, wounded at the airstrip on the day Samaritan's purse arrived. So it's India here, yeah. Yeah. from here to here. Yeah. But many are children. This is the only hospital in rebel-controlled areas where a quarter of a million Nuba are refusing to surrender despite crushing military defeats in use of Kuwa's last years. I will not be able to fill Yusuf's shoes, but I will leave to the ideals he devoted himself for and he died for. I will do my best and do everything I can, on the military side at least, to recapture some of the lost areas and also to continue the struggle and the liberation up to the achievement of the New Sudan, up to the achievement of freedom and justice for all. When Kuwa died, there was concern that Nuba in rebel-controlled areas would lose heart and cross to the government side. But this has not been the case. Morale in the mountains is high, and the new commander has already established himself as a man of the people, just like his predecessor. The government says these people are held by the SPLA as human shields. But the truth is that soldiers and civilians in rebel-controlled areas are happy and united in their determination to fight for the right to be Nuba, refusing ever again to be crushed underfoot.